Thank you, Andy. Um, so I just advance this. As uh, Andy said, I'm the director of the Energy Centre, and I thought I'd just um, <coughs> give you a sense of uh, what we're about in the Energy Centre. Um, the Energy Centre is very problem focused. Okay, so we like to approach so-called real-world problems. Um, we like to inform um, our outputs uh, with with good uh, good research. And importantly, um, it's cross-disciplinary. So every research project that I've been involved in since uh, being director of the Energy Centre has involved uh, cross-disciplines. So they'll, they'll come from engineering, science, arts, uh, and actually Nikkei um, some years ago too. So <clears throat> it's very cross-disciplinary. That's what spins my wheels, gets me out of bed in the morning. Um, <clears throat> and what we try to do, we try to inspire um, first of all, and we do that through our publications, obviously, um, and we run a summer school on energy economics that's open uh, for a week, uh, no charge to anybody that's interested in energy, involve people, cross-disciplinary, try to influence um, um, the, uh, the community, public policy, and so on, and impact, um, that's the hardest thing, as most of us researchers know, is actually describing the impact of your research. But that's basically the um, <clears throat> what we try to do. I just want to mention, uh, talk bri very briefly about um, renewables, the, the work that we're doing on renewables. The New Zealand government set a target of 90% uh, by 2025 here. Currently it's sitting around 80%, and you can see that most of our, most of our um, electricity is generated by hydro resources. Uh, and <clears throat> we are very fortunate in New Zealand in having a hydro legacy. A lot of this development occurred in the 1960s, 1970s. Is a 90% is a feasible? Yes, it is. Um, our research has shown that um, it's quite feasible to, to, um, to hit the target of 90% renewables by 2025. And this will come primarily from geothermal, um, wind and solar developments, and of course, um, hydro, which is um, already uh, in place. We will not see much large-scale hydro development um, in New Zealand in the future here. Yeah. <coughs> Turning to wind and hydro, this was a, a problem that uh, the New Zealand Wind Association asked us to have a look at, and basically, um, <coughs> given that we have a high dependency on hydro, the interesting question is whether or not there is some kind of correlation between when the wind is blowing. Um, New Zealand has one of the best wind resources in the world. Our load factors are around 45%, so they're generating electricity about 45% of the time. The problem that we have in New Zealand is that typically when the wind is blowing, the water is not flowing into our hydros. So it's not an ideal, um, a, an ideal situation here. The other interesting, I'm sorry, with, I've, looks as though I've made a bit of a mess of that slide there, but does wind, wind, is, wind is a low cost source of electricity. And so the interesting question then is, does um, wind generated electricity have a depressing impact or a, a effect on the wholesale price of, of electricity. And if you look at these, these images here, you can see here, so the, you can't read that, <coughs> that is, a, that is a, a grid, the injection price, the pr wholesale price of electricity here, and the green one is the wind generation. So when the wind is blowing um, here, our injection, our prices at the nodes throughout New Zealand are low. And that's what we see um, throughout the country. So when, the, when these wind farms are pumping electricity into the system here, um, typically prices are relatively low. And when the wind is not blowing, you can see the opposite effect here. Our, you, you get spikes in electricity prices. Um, and so, so the answer to that question is yes. Um, by generation type, we see these are all statistical levels of significance here. Wind keeps um, a negative impact on price, hydro, uh, and thermal plants, as you'd expect, thermal, coal previously, and, and gas here, that's going to put upward pressure on, on prices. Geothermal was not significant. Okay, <coughs> and the other interesting question they had was whether or, the, whether or not these, um, these nodes are, are connected to one another. Well, they're obviously connected, but does wind entering um, at one particular node have a, a, a spillover effect on other nodes throughout, throughout the country? And we're able to, um, 
um, address that question yet um, <coughs> directly there using um, econometric techniques. And it raises the question of where are the best sites uh, for locating our wind farms. <coughs> a more recent study that, that we've just initiated is looking at the solar potential for, for Auckland City and we collaborated with Auckland, um, Auckland Council to get their LIDAR data there, um, which is so you've got um, impulses that come down um, from a plane in this case here, but they could be uh, drones or whatever, and you can build three, 3D models of the surface here. And so we're able to capture that and <coughs> look at the solar potential for different suburbs uh, throughout, throughout Auckland here. So this is Mount Eden here um, versus Pukekohe here. Um, and you can see the red here illustrating that Pukekohe houses have got a greater potential for solar than the um, houses in the Mount Eden area. So that's <coughs> a, a work that um, we initiated um, at the beginning of last year and it's still ongoing here. And so it raises the question of investment in solar here. Currently, <coughs> solar um, potential has increased from about five megawatts to uh, 35 megawatts in 2016. So we're gonna see a, an increase in this here. The levelized cost, so this is the cost of actually recovering your investment uh, and obviously maintenance costs and so on over the life of, a, um, of, of uh, the, the system here. It's about 38, 38, uh, 30 cents per kilowatt hour, which is slightly over um, <coughs> the price that you pay for um, electricity. Next steps here, we're working with Mighty River Power to develop an app um, to en enable consumers or households to look at, um, based upon the images that we can produce and the potential that we can um, illustrate here, whether or not it's worth their while investing uh, in solar. Um, and um, <coughs> that's... Um, and, and also one other future challenge here is that the invent of, of solar is going to create really um, big challenges for um, the local distributors such as, as Vector because when people are feeding electricity into the grid, they're actually using their resource and so there's issues around market design there. So thank you very much. <coughs>